especially now more than ever, right? No matter what your background is, your discipline, your previous work history, right? There's probably going to be a way to apply that in, in Bitcoin. And maybe one cycle, certainly two cycles ago, that, that wasn't the case, right? So it's, it's mm. worth noting. I mean, it's, yeah, it hasn't always been as, as easy, we'll call it, to get a job in Bitcoin as it is now. Thompson, co-founder of Bitcoin Talent Company. It is like truly my pleasure to have you joining here today. And since the last time we saw each other, I've been trying to play the beard catch-up game. But man, <laughs> it is it is phenomenal to see you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it, Curtis. Yes, I, uh, I've, I've been growing it a little bit since, uh, I guess, Disrupt, right? Last time we saw each other a couple weeks ago out in Miami. Well, speaking of the last time we saw each other, when I first met you, um, it's really just a clear, clear memory for me. It was, it was roughly a year ago. It was in yeah. Nashville and you had sponsored one of, um, they had a mining day and you had sponsored um, that conference. And when I saw you present, I was just really blown away. I've been around the ecosystem long enough. I, I generally don't run outside on somebody's coattails trying to meet them, but I, I did you. And I, I want to, I want to ask you to share a little bit about your company, but before I do, I just want to paint it from my own context is that Andy, um, from my perspective, you came out of nowhere and you have Bitcoin ethos through the, through the, through the roof, like your, your background, and expertise in recruiting and hiring and staffing was evident, but then the, your complete ownership of, of what it takes to succeed in Bitcoin and to understand Bitcoin really resonated with me. So I, I think we hit it off nicely and I've done my best to stay in your circle. You're a very influential man and I'm, I'm glad to have you here on the podcast. But with all of that as flowers and roses behind, um, uh, for, for the people who are listening, we, we speak to two primary audiences. We, we, we're, we're consumed well by the existing Bitcoin mining mm -hmm. ecosystem, but then we also have a large retail customer base. But you know, maybe uh, as you're recruiting uh, work, you, you, you serve um, industry and companies, uh, would, would you give that audience a high level of what uh, Bitcoin Talent Company is and the tremendous background that you bring to this industry? Yeah, yeah. First of all, thank you. My goodness, one of the kindest uh, intros. I'd love to have you go everywhere with me and give that intro. That's wonderful. Uh, but yeah, happy to kind of break it down, just two sides of the market, if you will, the, the two sides that we address in our our day-to-day. But going a little bit before that, so my my background, I mean, I, I am a recruiter by trade. That's been my career for you know 15 plus years now. Um, I'm I'm typically from more of like a tech company setting. So I'm here on the West Coast. I've worked in you know, the Bay Area for, for most of my career. Um, had the fortune of working at pretty well-known companies. I was actually an early uh, employee going back almost a decade now at Uber. So I was a part of that. Uh, well-documented period of growth for that business. You know, the show, if you ever saw the show on Showtime, I was there during all that. <laughs> so uh, a fantastic thing to be a part of. So I worked in-house, as they say, at companies like that. Also worked in kind of uh, boutique search settings. You know, these are small um, executive search agencies that would really actually support mostly the venture capital community. And so we would be recruiting resources that they can then deploy for their portfolios, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, along the way, I think I, I got good experience in different corners of the recruiting landscape, building processes for teams internally, doing the real like needle in the haystack type uh, type search for executive level roles at you know fast growing startups. All of that ultimately I, I brought together to to go out on my own. So I actually launched my first recruiting business um, back in 2020, uh, right before the pandemic, right before all the craziness that, that happened on the heels of that. Um, but right off the bat was the best decision ever. So I was off on my way, yeah, my, my journey as a business owner, building that that practice. Again, still focused more on what I would say is a more traditional tech landscape, right? Uh, but it was along this journey as a business owner where I very quickly started falling down the Bitcoin rabbit hole as well. You know, just a lot of reasons why I think the, the two journeys kind of happened um, around the same time. But for me, yeah, I mean, I fell, fell hard. I went through my own process of learning what's Bitcoin, what's everything else. Oh, actually, wait, you know, Bitcoin's the only thing that matters, right? So touch the stove a few times, if you will, to, to really gain that conviction. And, and as I say, like violently ricochet back very quickly to being Bitcoin only, right? And so once that, that conviction was there, once I knew and felt like I understood at least what Bitcoin was, I, man, I, I, I had to work in it. Right? I had to, I could no longer have these two paths be running in parallel, my professional journey and my you know, personal obsession with Bitcoin. Right. And so that, yeah, long winded here, but that really is the genesis of Bitcoin Talent Co. You know, it's the culmination of you know, 15 plus years, like I said, of experience. Um, it's, it's, you know, the, the V2, if you will, of, of an actual recruiting business that it already built. I essentially shut that down an otherwise successful business, shut it down to reopen it as Bitcoin Talent Co. And so that was at the beginning of 2023. 
um, you know, uh, brought a, a handful of folks over with me. Uh, Michael Tanguma, uh, who's one on the Bitcoin landscape, Eric Podwaski, who was previously at Bitcoin Magazine, and the three of us, you know, set on this mission to provide recruiting expertise and, and the process and the rigor, at least behind recruiting, in a way that I didn't yet see existing in the Bitcoin landscape. That thesis we had has proven true. You know, I think it's been a, a very well received uh, a kind of product and service that we're trying to offer to the space. And yeah, over the past year and a half, um, even though most of that period was still still kind of the end of the last bear market, uh, really proud to say we've we've supported a number of of the most well known Bitcoin companies. Yeah, these are businesses like Unchained, Relay, Stackwork, Fetty. You, know, you go on and on, and we've yeah we've been able to actually add value to each of those organizations. Um, and so yeah, on the heels of that, what I'll say is yeah we. Really, yeah, with the Bitcoin only focus, we do everything from a recruiting standpoint for a Bitcoin company. This is in terms of level of role, discipline, expertise. We've hired CMOs, CFOs. We've hired entry level marketing support, right? So everything along that spectrum, as long as, again, it's focused exclusively in the Bitcoin landscape. Um, on the candidate side of the fence, yeah, I think it's great for us to have been able to, to plant that flag Bitcoin only. If you're looking for a job in Bitcoin, come to us. You know, to be clear, obviously our Order of operations is filling an open role that a client of ours has, but it's still you know, valuable for us to build relationships with job seekers to at least kind of kind of keep them in mind for that exact moment when the right role comes along that we can give them a call, right? Um, and less there's to that, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to go into too much here, but to the extent we can provide education, resources, you know, how to position yourself to get a job in Bitcoin, that's actually a lot of the the kind of uh, content that we put together, whether it's a podcast like this or you know, pre-recorded stuff that that we um, distribute among our audience, just uh, Again, trying to teach job seekers to fish, if you will, in a way that, that they can also kind of empower themselves to, to move closer on their own journey to hopefully finding a job in Bitcoin. You, you shared some tremendous details there. I think that's certainly worth um, uh, uh, spreading that message and, and to learn a little bit more even about your co-founders. Um, that, that was uh, new information or at least rehearing that a second time was helpful. You said a couple of things like, you know, expertise and you also mentioned, in, you know, uh, uh, providing service to some of the largest names in Bitcoin. That's my perception from my vantage point is that you really have brought expertise and you're actually out there really bringing mm -hmm. tremendous value to, to Bitcoin organizations with your uh, with your staffing you you know from my my perspective it, a recruiter who's going to perform their best is really has a heart and care for people and I think mm -hmm. you drip that naturally I think that you have a real concern for people so if you've if you've got that you're able to you know have that um, ha have that heartfelt mindset and be a resource to people but also the other side of recruiting that I, I don't have the personal uh, insight into but I listened to um, uh, my first million with uh, with with uh, you know Sam Parr and, yeah, and Sean Perry <laughs> and w one of the things Things that I, I hear those guys talk about is um, the, in the two-sided marketplace, you always have to know it's like the dating app. You have mm -hmm. to know um, uh, who's the hot girl, because if you don't, <laughs> in the dating app, if you don't have hot girls, you don't have success. And my perspective is, is that in this two-sided marketplace of roles and candidates, the hot girl is probably the role. You, you need to understand yeah. um, where the hiring opportunities are before you can match those with, with the best candidate. Do, do I have that even close to right? Is the, you know, you the, if it's a cart before the horse, tell, tell us more. For sure. And, and actually, this is an interesting analogy to use because I, I would frame it like this too. When you think of two-sided marketplaces, I mean, there's there's plenty of businesses that operate in this way. Uber, you know, I mentioned I worked at Uber. Obviously, that's one of the most well-known ride-sharing, if you will, is one of the most well-known you know, two-sided marketplaces. Um, and most of those businesses, yeah, the, the dynamics require market equilibrium, right, to some degree, right? So supply and demand, supply and demand, riders and drivers, riders and drivers. For Uber, at least, we were always focused on making sure that that matched, right? And, and that's a very important thing. When it comes to hiring, honestly, we're, we're never going to have market equilibrium. We're never going to have enough roles for the number of job seekers who are, who are looking for opportunities. And that's just, I mean, it's we can call that a negative, but it is just, it's, it's the way it is, right? And so that's something you have to understand. So with that you know, being said, then your point is even further strengthened, right? Where there are many people competing for <laughs> for the hot girl, right? You know, everyone's vying for her hand in marriage, if you will. We'll just we'll go down this. We'll keep on this analogy, right? That's my fault. So, I did this. Yeah, she's uh, she's gonna have many suitors, right? At whatever, right? Uh, so that's the case, right? So for us, yeah. First of all, just having access to the company, to the job. Yeah, people who are interested in it, we can give them a little more information beyond what's on the job description, right? Like that's that's valuable, you know, uh, all in itself. Um, but then being able to, uh, you know, the, the way I say it is this: like we're we're not pitching to a founder. Let us 
sell your company or pitch this role in a way that you can't. Honestly, the, the founder of a company or the executives of a company should be the best recruiters. We're just there to kind of put a little bit of a, of a process around this. We're here to, to you know, significantly increase your top of funnel, whether it's through our own inbound applicants or you know, the heavy lifting we do as recruiters to actually go to market and source that passive talent, right? Which is actually where most of hires come from, to be honest. It's usually not job seekers. It's actually us going out and like pitching people who otherwise weren't looking, right? And so putting all those pieces together, that's that's the value we provide. You're making sure that the list of suitors, if you will, we've we've canvassed the whole kingdom and it's all the princes, all the you know, whatever it may be. And, and putting that short list together for uh, for a hiring team to then kind of feel confident and actually have a lot of conviction in making a final decision based on all the, the you know, choices they have in front of them. You know, I, I think one of the reasons that I, you know, we've gotten along so well in our interactions is we might have that, that similar ethos. Obviously, we're both Bitcoiners and then we have like a real passion and concern for people. So I don't want to leave out the, the, the job seeker in our conversation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the the employer side, I think, is, you know, is, is, is highly relevant. So I hope we'll have a chance to to touch on both of them. I, I do feel like there's a nugget that I want to get your feedback on that is, you know, more for the, the job seeker. And I think that you're a perfect example of it is that whatever you were doing before, mm -hmm. if you have to work in Bitcoin, and I, I think they say this about the NFL, don't join, don't don't get in the NFL unless you have to be in the NFL. Mm -hmm. If you have to work in Bitcoin, then you should work in Bitcoin. But whatever it was that you were doing before, that that skill set is highly applicable here. It's just turning the puzzle piece until you can find out where you For match, sure. and then to hear your back. I'm a recruiter by nature. You 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 shared, and then when you went down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, you decided to deploy that 15 years of experience into uh, Bitcoin. Is, does that match entirely with what you see? Any perspective you could add to, yeah. to my thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm my own example of, of this story, as you put it, right? I Starting this business was really just my selfish way of working in Bitcoin, right? I mean, obviously, yep. I'm, I'm, I, there's a, let's be real, a genuine like, uh, a desire to add value to the space that I've now become so obsessed with, right? And so it's, it's very like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think for all the right reasons, right, I'm doing this, but also because I just wanted to work in Bitcoin, right? It's like, well, how can I do that? Do I do I go work for a company? Do I find the right job? Oh, well, actually, I have this unique skill set and unique, like, business that I already built that maybe could be relevant to Bitcoin. So that was just my journey. You know, there's tons of other reasons why why other folks could probably mirror that in, in some capacity. Um, but also, I think it's important to, to raise the point that, especially now more than ever, right? No matter what your background is, your discipline, your previous work history, right? There's probably going to be a way to apply that in, in Bitcoin. And maybe one cycle, certainly two cycles ago, that that wasn't the case, right? So it's it's mm. worth noting. I mean, it's yeah, it hasn't always been as, as easy, we'll call it, to get a job in Bitcoin as it is now. Um, companies were way less mature. The overall ecosystem was way less mature. Most of the jobs or most of the needs that companies had were still very much on the technical side of the fence. Engineers, developers, that kind of thing. Uh, but what we're seeing now into yet another cycle, yet another you know, uh, bull market, but just you know another on the heels of another halving, right? We have, I think, companies that are certainly reading, reaching certain levels of maturity, companies that have been around for two plus uh, cycles now where they're hiring more robust teams across the corporate landscape, whether it's you know sales, marketing, people, HR, legal, I mean, all these kinds of things, right? Um, there's also, while we're on this topic, I think it's worth addressing just, you know, the fact that I don't think we're going to be so beholden to these four-year cycles anymore. So it's not like get a job now for the next two and a half, three years before the next bear market, right? Because then you're kind of screwed. I don't think that's the case either, right? I think we're going to start to see this smoothing out, both just because of, I guess, the adoption cycle. People can point to that. But but my my point of view is more so because of the influx of capital, venture capital specifically, into Bitcoin-only companies, right? And so now that that's a factor here, what you see is a company raising however many millions of funds. And at that point, they've got their, hopefully Bitcoin held in their treasury, right? They've got the money in their coffers and they kind of tune out what's happening from the cycles outside of so the price cycles specifically, right? They don't have to care about, sure. oh, we're in a bear market. Now I need to like tighten up again. The company should always be operating efficiently and tight. But if you have, you know, you've already raised funds, then you can just kind of focus on what you exactly need as a business and continue to go forward from there. Um, and so for all those reasons, I mean, it's just increasingly going to be opportunity. Uh, so part of what we can do then is, I help people to to map you know their prior world to the bitcoin landscape sometimes it's a pretty easy like you know direct one to two translation sometimes yeah you know, there may need to be a little bit of flexibility required for folks it's like you know you you were in you're in a certain job that maybe the core responsibilities aren't relevant to bitcoin but some of the skills you develop to be good at that job whether it's i don't know uh, you're very technical you're great with excel spreadsheets i don't know there's you know, very <laughs> you can point to a lot of different examples but those are the gems we'll then pull out to be like oh well shit if you did this a lot then maybe this can help you with xyz right 
And so those, those are the ways, again, without being able to directly or guarantee finding a job seeker job, we can at least share some of these nuggets of advice to help them kind of go, you know, go through their own process of, of switching from, you know, their prior world to the Bitcoin world. You know, Andy, one of the things that you shared there about um, capital and that really gave me the light bulb, you probably have an incredibly unique perspective as to how people are, are, are you know, growing and deploying capital because, you know, without people, companies are, are sometimes nothing. So I hope that we'll we'll circle back to that. But I, I because, you know, I'm just I'm asking you questions just for my own natural um, you know, uh, inquiry state when, when you're, when you're onboarding a new company, so there's, they're, they're, they're growing, they need to add, um, and they've, you know, decided to work with you. Are you, are you working directly with founders, co-founders? Do these have hiring departments? Are you working with the head of people, the head of HR? Who, who's your, uh, like audience that you're working with when you're onboarding a new company? Yeah, always, I'd say, uh, whenever possible, the founders, right? Um, and usually, that that has to be the case because it's an early stage business, right? There aren't layers of management or people teams built out yet. So it's, yeah, I mean, working with seed series A type businesses, it's by default, it's going to be the founders that we're working with directly. And if not the founders, then their you know, direct discipline owner, like a, a chief product officer, if, you know, if the CEO is not of that title or a chief you know, marketing officer, right? So working to fill those teams with the exact executives running those divisions. Um, for a larger business, I'll just use Unchanged, for example. Yeah, we, we obviously worked very closely with Joe to fill a number of executive positions, but we also collaborated very closely with their people team and, and did so very successfully, right? So obviously a business of that size has uh, that should have you know, built out a people team to manage what they've already got going on as a 100 plus person organization, right? And so um, that's where it's just multiple stakeholders involved. Obviously, Joe making final decisions on execs and the rest of his executive team, but their HR team, you know, kind of being our 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 partners on the other side of the fence, if you will, to help with scheduling and things like that. And so um, I don't know if this is part of the question, but this does come up. It's like, oh, well, if, if we do have a recruiter internally, does that mean, you know, it's no longer valuable for us to work with you? And that's not the case. You know, we just, we augment whatever it is that you already have going on. If it's no recruiting resources or if it is recruiting resources, we can still supercharge those efforts and, and work very closely, you know, and very much in, in lockstep partnership with people teams too. Wow. That's, you know, you, you know, multiple stakeholders, I think you clearly defined it. And then, you know, the ability to work directly with the founder, especially if it's an early stage startup, but as groups, as teams mature, they probably built out some internal. They should um, have. I hope that they would have. And, yeah. <laughs> and to, that you you can you know augment them. That makes that makes tremendous sense to me. What what do those companies see as friction? Because because I've been able to see you operate, and I know that you bring an amazing value to anyone who's trying to staff for their Bitcoin mining company. But not everyone's uh, you know doing all their hiring through you. How can I help? You know, I, I feel like this is how can I help you get more business because we. We, we so closely align. We need more people working in Bitcoin. What what friction do those employers see um, when it comes to deciding to work with uh, a recruiting firm like yours? And, and what what strategies do you recommend to them to help overcome the, those? Either it's a mindset or friction. Uh, talk yeah. talk to that that potential hire. Yeah, yeah. There, there's maybe two main points I'd raise, and I, uh, I I'll, I'll acknowledge this. This is more of like. The conversations you and I typically have ourselves, I hope this is still interesting for the audience, but it's nonetheless, I think it's important to walk through just um, the the first one being, oh, well, I can do this on my own, right? So again, as, as I said before, I made the point that founders are the best you know, uh, uh, recruiters for their businesses. They should be. I mean, it's, it's their baby. They built this. They should be able to pitch that, right? Um, and so it's it's maybe that incorrect assumption that, that that's the positioning I'm trying to take. Let me do something that you can't do. Oh, we can do this ourselves. I, I want to try it. Now, admittedly, there's probably a little bit of a financial reason, right? Like uh, if I do it myself, it's free. If I have to use you guys, there's there's a, a fee for the service. Of course there is, right? So that's part of the, the calculus, I'm sure, for most founders. Um, but ultimately what happens is understanding that hiring is difficult. Hiring takes time. A founder has a million other things to be doing. That that initial pushback that we may receive, given that we've already been operating for a year and a half now, we've already seen the boomerang effect, as we call it, right? Like, oh, you know, six months later, shit. Like, I, yeah, you know, I'm still I'm still struggling to find this person. Like, maybe maybe we should work together, right? Wow. Um, so we do see some of that. It's it's less of a less of a an objection or a pushback that that we give. We understand that this happens. I'm happy to yeah you know, let a founder kind of go through it, go through their own learnings. Yeah, you know, what's worked, what hasn't. And then when they, you know, uh, more often than not come back to us, we're, we're just as happy to, to dive in and really start providing that value right away. So that, that's a that's a very common one that comes up. Um, secondly, is just, I mean, the bigger the organization, just the, the harder it is to get it over the, the the hill, right? I mean, it's it's I don't think this is any 
There's no specific pushback. There's no like trepidation on the part of a person internally with a company saying, I don't know if we should do this. It's just step by step, whether it's you know, going through a vendor onboarding process or legal having to review contracts and legal doesn't have the context of the conversation we've been having. So there's like, you know, the, the, the buck gets passed several times, right? Between different uh, parties or different teams internally where, yeah, I mean, as with any kind of like process, any kind of like software acquisition or whatever. I mean, companies go through this for any decision they have to make that, in, that involves dollars and cents, right? Um, and so that's a big one we see too, and certainly at the, at the larger company uh, setting. Well, that that was that was phenomenal, and I do think that you gave me a comprehensive answer, and you you, you expressed concern. It, it, this is from this is from your heart. Is hey, you wanted to make sure that the audience was still engaged. <laughs> I come back to how how I open. I feel like a, a good portion of our audience is the existing mining Bitcoin mining industry, sure. and Bitcoin mining is hiring. There's there's you know there's growth going on in this industry. I think it's incredibly relevant for them to you know one yeah. meet you, but also gain that that interesting perspective because you know we're both all in on. Bitcoin, but I'm really all in on mining. That's the that's the ecosystem that I pay the most attention to. Maybe you'll you'll expand my thinking a little bit and not try to be you know completely narrowed on mining. But you you mentioned earlier capital and venture capital, and that just blows me away that you probably have a different perspective than I than I do. You see where folks are deploying you know what I call zillions of dollars. They're deploying large money into you know startups where they're taking a risk that this startup is going to work. And one of the first things that they're doing is hiring and staffing. So that really is impressive to me that you've got a different vantage point. Is there, have I, have I asked a good enough question that you'd be able to give any sort of framework or context as to what that, what, what that looks like from your perspective and what are you seeing happening in the Bitcoin ecosystem? Yeah. And what maybe the differences between, let's say the, the mining corner with respect to like Bitcoin overall. I mean, I would, I would make the point that Bitcoin mining is, is uh, very unique in that they're already has been to some degree. I mean, yeah, it's still growing and increasing in the same way that the rest of Bitcoin is, but there's already been pretty significant capital in the mining landscape. I mean, obviously the, the only public companies, the only Bitcoin companies that are public companies at this point are all miners, right? I mean, that, 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 that might be true. <laughs> Correct me if I'm that's wrong, right? Point. But um, but that that's a fact, right? Um, and then also even just on the, the upstart Bitcoin mining organizations, if you will, the smaller organizations, like it's still very capital intensive, you know, uh, endeavor, right? So from an early stage, like, whether it's raising venture funds or doing some kind of debt financing, right? I mean, there's there's just a lot of money required to to operate successfully and efficiently in in the mining landscape. So that money variable has already been much more apparent in mining in a way that I think the rest of the the general Bitcoin ecosystem hasn't seen yet. Um, I'd also say that Bitcoin, as we talk through this, you'll you'll probably start to get the sense that my my own personal interest in mining is why I'm I'm you know, really adamantly trying to double down and support that landscape just because I, first of all, obviously see it as such an important part of Bitcoin overall. Like, where are we without mining? Where are we without proof of work, right? It's just, it's it's the the foundation of, of everything we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, but there's so many like different uh, facets to mining, whether it's just the corporate functions, again, the roles we've already been filling for other clients, whether it's engineering talent or corporate talent, you know, general business type work, but then all of the hard work that happens on site, if you will, you know, and, and all the different locations where, where mining operations are actually, you know, running right yeah technician talent um you know uh, facilities operations if you will and then even the more like you know kind of upstream work of that of development type work you know power purchase agreements you know real estate as a component of that how are we finding and acquiring and building the right locations i mean all that right so so that like operations we'll call it i guess side and more like on-site operations element of of bitcoin mining requires a ton of labor and a ton of like purpose built, like very specific talent that, you know, I think to the extent we can start to like um, capture a lot of that and have like funnels of that specific talent. I mean, that'll ultimately prove super valuable to, to all different organizations as well. Wow, you're um, I'm 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 so glad you're my guest today. I feel <laughs> I, I feel like I'm I'm learning a lot. The when 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 I think of, you know, hiring a CFO, they might not necessarily have to have um, you know, previous Bitcoin experience in order to, you know, uh, staff. But I, um, when when I get a chance and I'm asked uh, um, if there's an opportunity to hire a Bitcoiner, somebody who's already found Bitcoin on their own, and now they're looking to deploy that that skill, I think that comes top down from, you know, C-level executives to For certainly, sure. you know, uh, uh, mining technicians. And, and honestly, sometimes I could I could flip that as if without mining technicians, there's no point to have a CFO. If you don't have people who know how to plug yeah. in a thousand miners at once, then then you don't you don't have an organization. But when it comes to the 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 physical jobs of operating, 
operating a mining facility, one of my biggest recommendations is to try to look local. It's like mm. get involved in the local Bitcoin meetup wherever your uh, yeah. facility is and like look to recruit that person's younger brother because they've been hearing a bit about Bitcoin for so long. Well, any any insight that you would share there about hiring locally for uh, Bitcoin mining operations? Yeah, I, I would just echo what you said. I mean, it's incredibly important just for the purpose of like, um, you know, em empowering the community in which you're starting to operate, but also like, you know, these Bitcoin mining locations are usually not in your larger metropolitan areas, right? So the idea or, or the, the notion of recruiting to then relocate someone to these places, that that, that may be, you know, difficult, right? It's, it's not as easy to do, especially if you're trying to hire at scale. So yeah, go to the source right off the bat and, and kind of eliminate that difficulty. Um, I would even go one step further though and say like, okay, well, yes, let's find the folks who are Bitcoiners there. Let's find the folks perhaps who had translatable skills, whether they were, you know, just kind of IT technicians in a data center or something else somewhat tangential sure. to that, right? That we yeah. can repurpose. Um, but to even to, to push that conversation forward or to, to, to make that, um, pipeline or that funnel even more available is, yeah, why not, why not look at like building coursework, right? And this is, I've already seen this to some degree. You, you perhaps have already seen this as well, whether it's like, local um, junior colleges or technical college type things, you know, uh, repurposing some of that coursework to actually be very specific to Bitcoin mining. There are miners I, I can point to already who are trying to do work like that. Um, then there's the more like readily available, you know, internet content, you know, folks like, uh, I know we're going to be meeting with Brad out in Nashville, right? So folks like Mining with Brad and that whole organization he's built, you know, building coursework um, information. I think of, um, uh, just rhetoric, you know, there's there's lots of really, really interesting content being put together by folks who are all about um, educating a, a, a certain demographic, wherever that demographic may be, specifically arming them with skills to get into Bitcoin mining and then going from there. And so if you can provide that content, but like provide it specifically to uh, local talents and wherever you're thinking of opening your operation, then then I think you build a, a pretty like organic pipeline of, of consistent talent at that point. You you know you you can you can tell someone's a gangster just by the uh, the, the extras that they bring into the conversation. You mentioned uh, you know uh, mining with Brad as well as Justin. For those those who don't know um, uh, Compass, we we did a, a nice profile uh, from bars to Bitcoin on Justin and his journey. And now I'm working closely with him. He's um, he's in Col he's he's working all over, but specifically in Colorado, we're yeah. trying to look at a at a program inside of one of the. Um, you know, correctional That's facilities awesome. in Colorado that, you know, uh, training, exposure to economic freedom, mm -hmm. you know, like Bitcoin's for everyone yeah. and, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin also unites. Uh, I do think you and I clearly wore our uh, Bitcoin ethos on our sleeve. <laughs> so I don't think there's, you know, there's no, uh, there's no shit coining going on <laughs> in, in this conversation, but, you know, slightly beside Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining is obviously the growth in AI, ML and mm -hmm. HPC compute. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, a, a Bitcoin miner who's not looking at how to deploy their resources into AI, ML compute, they're probably leaving economics on the table. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing anything from that from your perspective? What, you know, whether it's higher recruiting, company staffing, any any insight you would share with our audience about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely seeing it. I, I will fully admit this is where I have less expertise overall, just the the differences, the intricacies. I mean, obviously we can we can all understand that, you know, even the the functional hardware required for Bitcoin mining ASICs, right, versus uh, more like high performance computing type things and GPUs. I mean, it's it's different. So it's not like a it's not like you can build an operation and then all of a sudden flip back and forth, like flipping a switch, right, between supporting either of those fields, whether it's again Bitcoin mining or um, high performance computing needs. Um, but yeah, to the extent that companies who already have access to certain, you know, energy sources, right, or, or have already you know, uh, obtained um, certain like energy costs, right, you know, how, how then the, as a next step do they deploy those, right? So that's where you're starting to see some like diversification, if you will, of like, okay, well, maybe this portion of our business should be continued to, to purchase ASICs and do mining, right? This person percent should be focused on high performance computing. Um, I think Iron's probably the ones I'd point to like furthest down that road right now. Yeah, the team over there doing a lot of work on that front. Um, but I'll see it becoming more common. Again, I, I would defer to you, probably more of an expert than me in this place, but you know, uh, yourself and, and folks in your roles and other miners, how they're thinking about this, I'm, I'm sure it's top of mind. Now, my lens is then, okay, from a hiring standpoint, how, what are the differences or how does that factor into this? Um, and, and again, I think it just it just opens up the aperture a bit more, right? So, I mean, if, if you've been working at an Amazon data center for however long or meta data center, like that's exactly the same thing now as a, as a Bitcoin mining company, quote unquote, who would be getting into high performance computing. So that, that transition for you, if, if you're looking for a Bitcoin job is like as seamless as can be, right? Well, I... 
I don't want to share, you know, I don't, I don't want to take the conversation off of Bitcoin Talent Co., but I will give some insight from a compass perspective. We're we're interested in offering our services into AI ML. Yeah. Um, however, you know, through our growth and learning curve, what we've come to understand is that our best operating facilities are ones that we're controlling and operating ourselves, mm -hmm. where it's actually our employees. They they got a compass logo on their shirt and we, yeah. you know, own or operate the facility and they're the ones in there keeping the machines um, open. And so what what we see as an opportunity is can we as we grow can we look for capacity inside of new or you know existing or, or new facilities that we can dedicate to ai ml and then host someone else's machine so you mm -hmm. might be able to acquire the you know nvidia um you know servers but do you have the electrical capacity or the building or the infrastructure the know-how to operate them our founders come from that background they come mm -hmm. from a background of operating large gpu clusters and the skill set to operate um, you know, AI ML compute is not that different um, from what we currently do. So it, it is on our roadmap to um, to that degree. Uh, Andy, I, you know, we, we typically try to record in that like half an hour element. I believe, you know, I want to keep going a little bit longer if you'll let me, but I, I feel like we're leaving a lot of stuff on the table. I also think that you bring a tremendous amount of value to Bitcoin, to Bitcoin mining, and to our audience and ego uh, and ecosystem. So I, I don't necessarily want to put you on the spot, but I wouldn't I wouldn't mind a little. Uh, Andy, I, I feel like hiring never stops. I feel like recruiting never stops. You have to. It's a drumbeat. You have to constantly yeah. be growing your team, uh, adding talent. So. All of that to say, I, I'd like to ask you to come back. I'd like to mm -hmm. ask if we could just, you know, maybe continue this conversation at, a, at, a, at another time. I think there's a, there's a lot more to say. So generally, is that something you'd be interested <laughs> in? Will you come back and hang out with me again? Of course. I mean, I always look for an opportunity to hang out with you off camera as much as on camera, right? So I'd count me in, whatever you guys need. Happy to be a part of any conversations moving forward. Well, well, speaking of off camera, um, you know, you and I, uh, we, we had our first booth at Mining Disrupt. So mm -hmm. when I saw you at Mining Disrupt, I was our first booth in several years at Mining it was Disrupt. Great, by the so way. When I, I they, love the video they, after the fact. You guys did a great job with that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very, very, very kind of you. Um, but when we saw each other there, I was in the weeds and neck deep and didn't get to spend too much time with you. And so therefore, I don't necessarily know this answer, but I'd, I'd assume um, uh, you're, you and your whole team are going to be in Nashville next week um, for Bitcoin 2024. Or what, what are you guys doing in Nashville? What's going on? Yeah, uh, we're actually, as a team, nailing all that down this week. It's been crazy thinking of all the side events, all the, the different things that we we have um, committed to participating in all that. So, again, the conference will be there, um, certainly through the industry day, the first day. Um, I Personally, I may have to come back on, on Saturday. We'll see, just you know, family requirements, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so we'll be we'll be on the ground, just doing the rounds, introducing, shaking hands, you know, talking as much as many people as we can there. Um, certainly on the industry day, and then likely the first day of the conference as well. Um, really excited for some of the side events. Uh, again, we'll be seeing each other at uh, at Brad's events there um, on that Wednesday night, I believe, right? Yep. Out there at Nissan Stadium. So really excited to see see a lot of folks again. Um, you know, following up from Disrupt and hopefully meet some new folks there. Um, there's a lot of different happy hours getting in and out of. Um, I don't know how, how deep we want to go into the calendar here, but you're really excited to uh, to spend a lot of time at the park. Actually, those guys obviously over there do, do fantastic work. That's where we met for the first time, yeah, as, as yep. you mentioned. So we'll be at the park um, pretty frequently as well, if anybody's able to, to stop by there. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, uh, looking forward to seeing seeing where, where the nights take us otherwise, right? <laughs> Well, when I when I think of the park, it just reminds me of, you know, local Bitcoin community is everything. And there, you know, Houston has done a good job of building a Bitcoin mining energy ecosystem. Mm. Um, Austin clearly has like a bit devs where they have, yeah. you know, tremendous um, Nashville has uh, is is a phenomenal community. I think of Rob, the park is Rob, kind. O yeah. Rod, Odell, and Harry, and I know they have a full team around them. But mm -hmm. if um, if if folks aren't familiar with Bitcoin Park, it is definitely worth a worth a, a, a shout out. I, I I think you know you and I consume enough content. We know it's a fairly common thing at the end of the podcast. Hey, where can people find you? <laughs> but I think I want to ask you something a little bit more specific <laughs> along um, Bitcoin twenty twenty four. So uh, let's say 
I'm uh, you know a, a founder, co-founder of a startup um, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, or I'm you know part of a people department, and I've 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 consumed this podcast, and I know hey we're going to be in Nashville together. Um, if you're listening to that, and that's you, um, meeting Andy and his team in person just sets the bar apart. You're going to understand the resources that he brings to you. So with that as a background, are you open to you know to meetings? How would people find yeah. you if they wanted to connect with you in Nashville? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, again, we'll we'll be there in person doing the rounds. I'll, I'll be you know uh, introducing myself to as many of those businesses there in, in the um, I guess what's called the bazaar or whatever. The yeah, uh, meeting the folks there. Um, I, I just give it out here. I mean, email me, right? Yeah, you know, if, if if you're not gonna have a booth or if you want to find me otherwise, you want to meet up at the park, you want to get drinks anywhere downtown after, right? Just shoot me an email, Andy, first name at bitcointalent.co. Yeah, happy to to connect with as many folks as possible. Um, yeah, we'll be wearing our shirts. Look for the logo. <laughs> track us down, right? Yeah, you know, see, I, I used the word gangster, uh, you know, earlier. That's that's how I feel. You're you're phenomenal at what you do, and for anyone who's um, looking to add to their team um, and, you know, a Bitcoin only ecosystem, I strongly encourage you to, you know, connect with Andy and learn from him directly the value uh, that they can they can bring. Well, I, I do think it's OK for us to wrap here. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't share our own socials and ask you that if you're if you're I, I listen on Spotify. So if you're if you're listening on Spotify, uh, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this and these two handsome beards are on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we want to grow our audience and bring more value to other people. So uh, please find us. We're also active on on Twitter. Uh, myself, because I'm old, I swim in LinkedIn. I hope that you'll find me and, uh, and, uh, and connect with <laughs> me on, on LinkedIn. Andy, um, I feel like I leveraged our personal friendship to bring you on the podcast today. You have brought our audience a tremendous amount of value. I look forward to our in-person conversations in Nashville, but also um, I think we've left gas in the tank. There's yeah. more that we can talk about, about getting jobs in Bitcoin. So I look forward to having you back and continuing the conversation. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.